Okay, guys, so here's what I wanna do today. I wanna just compare what will happen between these two scopes. Now, as you guys see here, this is a K-S-O-N, K-S-O-N. It's a 104, so it's a four inch. Um, F6.8, 700 millimeter focal length, and it is an ED. Now, this is a, a decent scope. I, you know, you guys saw my review. Um, so this is like, if somebody wants to get into, uh, most people don't like semi Apple uh, words, but it's just to make it easier. Something that's not like a high end Apple chromatic, not a triplet. This one's a double it ED. And then this guy beside it is, is, is also a four inch. It's 102 millimeter, but it's an F10. So basically this guy is an ED, uh, but F6.8, and then that one is F10. They're both the same size as far as the four inch size is concerned. So what I wanna do is take a look at the moon. As you can see, it's right there. And uh, we're gonna see if I can see any color because I'm gonna switch you guys around. Okay, because uh, both of the D scopes should basically be equal, I think, uh, or, or according to the stats. And the reason is because, uh, well, this guy's, uh, even though it's an ED, it's F6.8, and then that guy's an F11. Color correction should be pretty much identical. Now, of course, this one here, uh, you know, has better rings, it has a better focuser, sliding dew cap, and this one doesn't is your basic doublet acrobat. But you know, let's see what happens on the moon, because uh, if there is any color fringing, you definitely will see it on the moon, which is the brightest object next to the sun in the sky. So let's see what happens when we test these guys. I'm just gonna let them cool a little bit more. I have them had them covered uh, type of thing, but uh, I just wanna give them maybe another 15 minutes of cooling time. And really the only way to compare these, let me just flip this around. Really the only way to compare these properly is um, I should, um, I have to make a chart and I have to do the power on this guy because it, when testing them, I should be virtually the same power magnification on this guy and that guy. And so they're gonna use different eyepieces. For an example, uh, you know, 25 on this guy might be 20 power. Uh, I'm just guessing here. Uh, let's say, and then on this guy, a 20 power might be a 32 or a 40 millimeter, something like that. So when I test it, I'm gonna make a chart on each of them up to their maximum power. And then uh, even though they're gonna be different eyepieces, they're gonna be as close as I can get to the same power. That way uh, we can compare it properly. The last two rows are uh, Teleview Palazzo's, but over here I got the full set of Radian and a two times Barlow. Now I don't think I'm gonna use a two times Barlow, just strictly eyepiece. Uh, sometimes I feel like the Barlow degrades the image just a hair, and I don't wanna use a Barlow at this time uh, because you know I do have a three millimeter, uh, four or five millimeter or uh, eight. Uh, I should have a five somewhere too, here it is. So I don't need to use any Barlow at all. Anyway, uh, so the Radians are good eyepieces. Okay, so we are going to Turn to the moon. Now, mind you, no slow motion controls and no finders. However, I'm going to try to locate it uh, manually. Uh, without it, it's going to be a little bit tough. I don't recommend people doing it, but let's just see if I can do it. There we go. Ready? Got it. Got the moon. Okay. What do I think? Okay. 50, well, what are we at? 55 power on the Celestron Doublet Acromat. Okay, at F10, you definitely see color fringing on the, uh, just on the rim of the uh, moon. It's not super overpowering, but it's, it's there. Um, Now, the image is pretty good though. Um, it's about a three quarter moon, and craters, cratelets are all sharp. Okay, very nice. Um, 
Okay. So crystal clear, I think any new person would enjoy a four inch doublet refractor. Doesn't have, doesn't have to have no special ED glass. Now, let me just uh, pause and we'll go to the next one while I set up. Okay guys, so now we have a 14 radian on the caisson uh, 102 f 6.8 so of course it's shorter it has to have a little bit stronger um, eyepiece to equal almost the same uh, what do i think is better now as far as color fringing i do again see some at the rim of the moon however everything is nice and sharp uh, crystal clear uh, there are the craters cratelets Everything's nice. Uh, what do I like? Uh, which one do I like more? Um, okay, I will say one thing. I don't have a finder on each. So even though it only takes me a couple seconds to find it, I'm going back and forth, uh, I would say probably not a great idea to not have any finder because it just would be a little bit easier. And with no motors, there, you know, it's actually moving. And by the time I get to the next one, it's already going to be gone and I got to start all over and find it. So it's probably not a great idea to not use finders, although I could do it, but it's just going to be a little bit more headache. Now, I'm just going to double check on the other one. See, what do I like better? And I'm just trying to look at different areas of the moon just to kind of see what do I like as far as the image quality. Okay, let's go back to this one. That's a tough call. One more time, one more time. Let's see, I'm sure do I see. It's pretty good too. Hmm. Okay. After the first power, I'm going to say virtually they're identical. Uh, I don't really see a difference in either. Um, and that's what basically I was saying before. That, um, you know, what you're paying for when you're getting an ED scope is basically it's much, much shorter. Like this guy, as you can see, I can compress it. And it's just so much shorter where that guy uh, is so much longer. So basically that's what it is. Um, the older style scopes, because they were really long, it had enough time for the light to come to a focus point and give you better color correction. Basically, the new designs are they're making them higher quality glass, but the uh, a shorter one is equal to that guy uh, longer. Does that make sense, guys? So a 51 doublet uh, ED is basically equivalent to like an F10 of the same uh, size re refractor. So that's basically how it goes. And if this was a 53 glass, then it would be probably better. Uh, to, uh, to, I'm just guessing here, 20 to 30% better image quality and color would be better. Uh, but also, if it was exactly the same, you can make this instead of a, you know, maybe F5. You see how it is? So with better glass and then triplets, you can make them shorter and have the same quality as a long one. So that's basically what you're getting, something more portable, uh, lightweight type of thing, uh, but of course it costs more. So that's the trade-in. If you want to save some money, you can always get a long format uh, refractor, and if it's long enough, it will approach something that's a, you know, ED 51 glass, maybe even 51 if it's long enough uh, type of thing. Uh, let me go to the next power. Okay, starting to get a little dark here, so I have to get my red uh, LED flashlight. So now I'm going to the 10 radian, which is where I got this one. So here's where we are, guys. I got an eight on this one, the caisson, and I have a 10 on the Celestro. So let's see what happens. That looks pretty good and, pretty good and clear. Let's try the next guy. that bottom so basically the rim the edge or the rim that's where the terminator is that's where the uh, the shadow is cast and I'll be able to tell where do I like better 
Okay, I'm using a little slow motion control. Yeah, that's nice. I still see some color uh, at the edge, to be expected. The moon is very bright unless you have a 53 glass or anything like that fancy. Um, it's going to have color. Okay, let me see. Okay, what do I think, guys? You know, I think now, now that we're getting, we went twice the power as the first one, uh, I think now this one slowly starting to edge out that one there, the, the Celestron long tube. So, um, so basically, what I'm gonna say is the fit and feel uh, is just better with a dual speed focuser. It's lighter and so it's more stable. Um, and it's just now that I'm going up and up in power, the image is sl slowly starting to become a little bit better in, in the ED versus the long. So as my other part I just said a few minutes ago looked virtually identical, it did in the low power. Now as you go up in power, that's where it's, you're, you're going to be able to see it. So my verdict is then, if you're on a tight budget, if you're a brand new person, go for a longer tube get that image quality as good as you can so I would say f8 is probably the minimum you want to go uh, you probably want to go f10 uh, I mean they don't really have up to f12 now there's very few scopes that are f12 um, but I would say try to get at least in uh, uh, you know four inches a very good size it's not a starting, it's not a serious starting. You're, for a refractor, four inches, you're getting, you're definitely at the intermediate level. So if that's all you can afford, get a four inch Acromat. Uh, F10 would be better to keep that color down. Remember, everything else like Jupiter, Saturn, Venus, Mars, whatever, uh, is not as bright as the moon. So that color is gonna be very minimal, um, or virtually none on those things. Uh, it is a, uh, I can see it on the moon, but the moon is very bright. Um, okay, so as far as my conclusion, which one would be the winner? If you, if you have a little bit more budget, I would say if you can go to an ED scope, it's going to be shorter, it's going to be lighter. Um, if it has a dual speed focuser, that's going to be definitely a plus for you to find focus. Um, if it has a sliding dew cap, even better, because it, it basically just shrinks to, for portability. It's basically it. Um, if you can get into a doublet with 53 glass, even better. But of course, it's going to cost more, guys. Um, so my verdict on these two scopes, the Celestron on the low to medium power did very well comparing to an ED scope. Uh, now, mind you too, that Celestron, those type are, you know, the older designs from the 80s and 90s and 2000s type of thing. The ED is the, you know, newer after the 2000s type of thing. Um, so, but you definitely can see it when you go from the medium to medium high power, uh, where, where it begins to shine. Um, so that's really it, guys. So my, my thumbs, is gonna, thumbs up is gonna be to the caisson. It gives a really nice uh, view. Um, you know, the Celestron isn't too far behind if you're on a limited budget or you're a first time buyer. You do not need to get no fancy refractor. It, it does pull its weight. But again, uh, when you compare them side by side, um, once you get up in power from the medium to high, it does slowly start to lose ground to this guy. Anyway guys, that's my video. Uh, that's what happens when you compare two four inch refractor and new design with ED glass versus a doublet Acromat. That's an older design, but longer. Um, it still keeps up until, until you start pushing the power. Hope you guys liked this video. Cheers. See you guys next time.